So before we get started, let's see what needs to be installed in your machine. So you need Node.js installed in your computer. Next, you also need Clojure. We will also be using Shadow CLJS to compile our Java, our Clojure script code to JavaScript code so that it can run on the browser. Uh, we will see that how to do that uh, very shortly. And next, we will be cloning this repository. Uh, it's called React, Rea uh, React Redux Real World Example App. It is written in React and Redux. And um, yeah, so let's go to the let's go to this green button over here and let's copy the string and let's go back to our terminal and let's clone this repository uh, once we have this let's install all the dependencies uh, and open it in a new text editor uh, instead of checking out the master branch, we will be checking out the 00 branch. 00 branch is the starting point of this tutorial. Um, so in this example, we will just have a hello world printed on the browser, which we will see very soon. So now let's open the code with an Atom text editor. And here index.js is opened. And in this file, you have uh, React and React DOM being imported as a dependency. And you have a class called app, which extends the React component. And inside this class has a single render method that returns JXX uh, which at one tag. And inside that, it says hello world. And on line 12, we have React DOM.render. This render method takes two arguments. One is the, um, the app instance, um, you're calling um, instantiating the app, and you are also passing the document get element by the dot root. If you look at over here, you will see this is the package JSON, package.json for this file, and it has name, version, um, it has dependencies uh, for this application, and it also has scripts. Um, it has four scripts, start, build, test, and eject. Uh, the one that we are interested in is the start. So if you do yarn start or npm run start, it will start a local dev server. So let's go do that. We will do yarn start, and this will start a server on localhost.3000, and it said hello world. Next, let's create a basic CLJS application so to do that we can do npx create CLJS app and uh, we will give a name of this application and we will give it reagent reposh real world example so what this will do is this will uh, scaffold out a bare bones closure script project with a reagent project and uh, yeah and it will also install all the all the things that we need to, to run. Okay, so now we have initialized, um, okay, let's see, package install failed, press run yarn in the app folder. Okay, for some reason, the package installation failed. Uh, this script also initialized a Git repository. So what we need to do is we need to cd into this folder and uh, let's see what's inside. Okay, first of all, let's go ahead and create a two, Let's open two terminal tabs, uh, one being the uh, React app and the other one being the uh, the Reagent app. Okay, let's cd to this file. We will um, install all the dependencies, and once the dependencies are are installed, we will open the code. Okay, so we are using Atom Text Editor to open the code, and as you can see, we have aligned the JavaScript with closure script code side by side. Now, if you look at the right side, you will see a bunch of folders like public, source, app, E2E. Uh, what we are interested in right now is in the app folder. Inside the app folder, we have a file called core.clgs. We will go there. And this file is the entry point of application. Now, uh, earlier we went over how 
so in this application, you on the top you will see app.core, so and it has ns written on it. So what this means is this is a namespace, a namespace declaration, and the namespace for this file is app.core. Now the convention is that app is the root level directory, so that will be always be the the first name, and then dot means it is a directory, and inside that we have a file called core.cljs. So hence app.core. Let's go ahead. Uh, we also ha uh, we have also imported reagent.core as uh, as an alias of R, and also we have something called app hello refer, which refers to hello. Uh, we will delete this. We are not interested in this. We will have our own. Shortly, we will write um, a function called app that returns hello world. So next we have render method, a render function, and this render function does the same thing that react.rom render does. It takes two arguments, the, um, uh, the component and the, the DOM element. And um, what this will do is it will take this component and then it will put it inside this DOM element. And finally, uh, we have a function called main, and this is the entry point of our application. This function has one meta tag called export, and it has it. What this function does is it, and it calls the render method. Okay, let's go back to the render method and see what this dev afterload tag means. So this meta tag means that every time the file changes in this um, enclosure script, um, the browser will get reloaded. It's like a hardcore reloading thing. Okay, now let's go to index.html. Okay, so index.html, you have several things. You have the ID of app, and this ID is the one that we just saw in core.cljs. And as you can see over here, a script. Uh, you also have a script tag, and uh, you have a source of js.main.js. Now, main.js is actually the compiled uh, closure script code to JavaScript code, and uh, we are we haven't done this part yet. We will do this very soon, uh, but I'm just saying this. Um, so this is the compiled main.js, and this will be inside the JS directory, which we will see very soon. Okay, now let's go back to our app.core namespace and write that app function. And app is a closure script hiccup component. And this will return an h1 tag with hello world inside it. And as you can see, hiccup is just a vector, right? With two elements in it. In this example, the first element is a keyword and the second element is a string. If you compare this with, with the uh, JavaScript implementation, JavaScript has this concept of, well, React has this concept of JSX. So if you look at it, this is not really JavaScript. It is a, a, a syntactic um, sugar to write. Um, instead of writing React or create element every single time, it is a, a way of writing that in shorthand. But as you can see, it, uh, I mean, in this example, it's not a lot, but you can, you can clearly see the benefit that Hiccup has, and Hiccup is something that is natural to this. Uh, it's, 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 it's basically a data structure, right? But Hiccup, um, but the um, JSX is not. Let's go ahead and convert our class-based component to a functional component. And there you go. Just in one line, you have hello world. Super concise. Okay, nice. Now, the function on the left is equivalent to the function on the right. The only difference is that JavaScript uses JSX and um, you have, uh, in ClojureScript, you have vectors. <coughs> we will also delete the, the hello function and replace it with the app function that we just wrote. Cool. Okay, once we have that in place, uh, as you can see, this is the app um, ID that we just saw. Next, we need to, let's run our application. 
In order to do that, let's go see what scripts we have it in package.json. So if you look at package.json, we are interested in two main scripts, the start script and the build script. On the start script, we are calling shadow CLJS watch app, right? And on the build, so let's see what this does. Let's go to shadow CLJS and look for uh, watch app. So what this does is it compiles our closure script. It takes all the closure script code and it combine, compiles to JavaScript code. And every time you make changes to this closure script file, it watches for the changes. And as soon as the file changes, it will recompile and the browser will reload. And it's awesome. We will also look at the Shadow CLJS release app. Now, once we have built our application, we will see this step in the later lectures. But once we have a, once we have finished our application, we want to ship it. We want to, um, we want to, we want to optimize it so that it does not take a lot of space. So when you are ready when you are ready to launch your application to the cloud you will run shadow cljs release app so for now we are interested in the start script okay so yarn start app right so app what does this app mean so this app is actually the build id which you will see in shadow cljs.edn so this you can think of um, a webpack for, for closure script. This, in this file has all the instructions as to what are the dependencies, what are the, uh, where is the source paths located, um, and da, da 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 So let's see. So as you can see, the structure of this file is, um, it's a Eden file, and inside is a map, one large map, and it has a few key value pairs, which we will go over very soon. First, let's minimize the um, builds value and as you can see you have one two three four five key values the first one is the build which we will shortly see uh, second one is dependencies so in the dependencies we mention all the dependency that we all the closure script dependencies that we are using um, this is very similar to the dependencies in package.json except this is not json this is eden this is better because you have data types. So dependencies is the keyword. The value is a vector of dependencies, right? Next, we have dev HTTP. It accepts a map. And the key of the map is a number, 3000. It means that when we start our dev HTTP, it will start on port 3000. Uh, since our React app is starting in port 3000, so we might have to change that. Uh, we will change it to 4200. And... Um, public is the, the directory where all the public resources are located. Uh, basically, our index.html should be inside this public directory. And next we have nREPL. And once we start our dev server, it will start a REPL server on port 3333. Uh, this will allow us to run snippets of code within our text editor. And this is really cool for many things right it allows us to test the code that we just wrote or it allows us to explore the new libraries or or you know new new code that we haven't seen before so it's, it's a very nice way to do um to build software it's a very interactive it REPL allows you to interact with 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 the software and it's very 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 cool which you will see which we will see very soon uh so the next one is we have the next one is source paths Inside the source paths, we specify where are all our closure script code is located. So our um, the value of our source path is SRC, and inside this SRC folder, we will write our application code. Okay, so let's look at builds next. We won't be looking at cards, test, and E2E builds, but we will be looking at app because uh, the E2E build and test build has to do with testing, actually. The E2E test and cards builds has to do with testing and we are not uh, covering testing in this course, so we won't look into that. However, we will be looking into the app build. 
and the app build app uh, is the key and it has a value of a map and the map has four properties the asset path modules output directory and target target means that we are writing the software for the browser so the target is browser right we are not writing a node.js application or a mobile application and output directory says that once our our file is is compiled save it in the public slash js directory and modules specify is where we specify the entry point of our application now as we already uh, as we saw earlier in the app.core namespace main is the entry point of our application so that is the entry point this will this function will get compiled to javascript and finally asset path is is the directory where our compiled file will be so that is what shadow shield js does so let's go ahead and start our application okay let's go ahead and do yarn start uh, this will update all the dependencies and this will start a server on port 3200 sorry 4200 as you can see we have hello world printed however we don't have the same styling as the hello world from react so the one on the left is closure script the one on the right is react so let's go to the React app. The, okay, so the reason why we don't have the style is because we haven't imported the... Okay, so it looks like our style is not configured properly. Let's go ahead and fix that. So in order to fix that, what we have to do is we have to copy the entire index.html, except for the ID and the, uh, the reference to the compiled JavaScript. So let's go ahead and copy index.html from the React application and we will copy it inside the our index.html in reagent. Uh, we will make sure that we need the ID of app then script of JS. So we will copy that and replace it with the one that they had. And finally, we will delete our old index.html. Okay, let's go ahead and format it properly and save. And now let's go back to our server and let's restart. Let's refresh. There you go. You have hello world printed on the console. How awesome is that?